Welcome to Globetrotter. I'm John Haggins. I'm here with Alison Metcalf, and she's from the Irish Tourist Office, and she is going to share some of the wonderful experiences that everyone should come to Ireland because it's a very special destination. Let's talk about it. Thanks, John. Well, it's great to be here. Well, I think first of all, just to say that uh, Ireland is becoming an increasingly popular destination with Americans. And as we say in Ireland, we don't just like Americans, we love them. There's obviously, uh, for some Americans, a very strong shared heritage. But what Ireland offers uh, American travelers is uh, a, a great bundle of history, heritage, spectacular scenery, and above all, a lot of fun. D storytelling, the people. And I think it's the people, it's the stories that people hear um, that really sort of resonates with people when they come back. So. We would suggest that you know people take an urban experience, start in Dublin or Belfast or Galway, uh, and then get out into the countryside, explore the wild Atlantic Way, which is one of uh, the world's longest coastal routes. It's hard to, to think that we have 1,600 miles of coastal scenery down the west coast of Ireland, stretching wow. all the way from the, the, the rugged peninsula of the Inner Sturm Peninsula in Donegal, all the way down to, um, down to the s southwest. Then, of course, you can explore some of the wonderful history in Ireland's ancient east. You may think you know the story of Ireland's ancient East. But it's a story of many plot twists, cliffhangers and bigger than life characters. Of civilizations and barbarians, mythical creatures and divine beings. Of brave knights and damsels in distress. This isn't a story you'll find in a book. To truly understand it, you'll need to take a journey. To unearth the footprints of the past. Find the hidden secrets in the great halls. Feel the emotion in the music. Hear tall tales from local storytellers. To uncover a story 5,000 years in the making, you need to start at the beginning. For people interested in history and heritage, obviously we have unique Celtic heritage, but people will be surprised to learn that we have some wonderful ancient history. We have Neolithic um, passage tombs, New Grange, older than the pyramids, older than Stonehenge, and those are the things that surprise people. That um, is a surprise, yeah. And it's, it's not easy, I mean, it's not difficult to travel around. It's a very compact country, and uh, we speak the same language, so yeah. almost, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I think is amazing? I was in Kinsale, I was in Cork, I was also in Dublin, and I came out from lunch and I looked and there was Drafton Street and right there was Pamela, I don't remember the name of the other shop, you know, the Pamela Blake or Pamela, Pamela Scott, is it? Pamela Scott. Scott. Uh, Sean owns that, someone I know from the States here who's from yeah. Ireland. Yeah. And uh, I went into the shop and I asked the young lady for him and she said, she looked at me as if I dropped in from the moon. <laughs> And then she called him, and he was at home, and he said, oh, yes, John, you know, why don't you come out to the house on Saturday? I said, unfortunately, we're leaving Friday, so, you know, because he was going to Paris yeah. that day, so it was one of those we missed one another. Well, I think that's one of the, the, the things about Ireland. It's unique because it's very, I mean, it's a very spontaneous society, and it's, it's small enough, so everybody knows each other. So if you find yourself maybe in the west of Ireland, staying in a beautiful um, castle or a, a manor house, and you suddenly decide today, it's a beautiful day, I'd love to go fishing, or I'd love to go horse riding, or I'd like to uh, play around a golf, you haven't got it organized, somebody can get it organized right there and Amazing. then. Everybody knows everybody. It's a great sense of community. And that's what I think is special about Ireland. We, we really sort of welcome and invite people to get involved, to immerse themselves in the destination, not just sort of stand back and tick the box and say, I've, I know, I've seen the Guinness Storehouse, I've seen the Cliffs of Moor, or I've uh, been around the Ring of Kerry. Really enjoy and experience that. Um, well, whether Oscar Wilde in the park. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But you know what I thought was amazing was that I had misplaced, first of all, I couldn't remember which hotel I was staying in because I've been in so many hotels. So I happened to have a matchbox. And I stopped on the street, and this young lady called the hotel. This is someone I didn't know. Yeah. Called the hotel so that I could find directions to how to get back to the hotel. And I thought that is very special. Yeah, and I think very that's, friendly. We we pride ourselves in that, and and I think you know, don't be surprised if you're uh, out off the beaten track somewhere, you're a little bit lost, and you ask for directions, and somebody will get in the back of the car with you and and uh, go with you and take you back to your bed and breakfast, or back to your castle, or back to your hotel. Exactly. Um, it's that kind of tourism and hospitality is in the the DNA, I think, of uh, all of us in Ireland. Did you say my castle? 
<laughs> it can be your castle, John, if you want. You can take over a castle yourself. You can stay in a castle. We've got wonderful castle. Oh, yes. Ashford Castle is very, very famous um, up in Kong in, in County Mayo and uh, Wild Atlantic Way, Drummond Castle. Uh, we have beautiful manor houses all around the country. Um, so, so I think what people like to do is that mix and match approach. They like to stay in bed and breakfast. It's a great way to, to meet the locals and they will really sort of introduce you to um, uh, local traditions and, and, and local um, things to do and see and you get the inside track on a destination uh, and then we have beautiful um, slightly larger manor houses uh, as well as the castles and of course if you want to um, stay in a, you know modern stylish boutique hotels we have those too particularly in the, some of the the urban centers what about the folklore Oh, the folklore. Well, <laughs> how long, how long, much time do you have for that? Uh, well, I, I think it's, it's everywhere. And, and I think I, I uh, use an example. If you're up in Northern Ireland, for example, along the Causeway Coastal Route, visit the Giant's Causeway, and you will be beguiled with stories about the Irish giant Finn McCool. Uh, whether you believe them is another story, but <laughs> I'll leave that one up to you. Wherever you go, we are famous for our stories. And uh, wherever you are in Ireland, whether it's through your guides, through, the, through your, your hosts, you will be regaled with stories. And uh, that's when we when we survey people when they come back from Ireland and we expect them to have had a good time in terms of the things they've seen right. but what sticks with people are the the stories the memories those those unexpected things that happen and uh, I think people come back with a, a sense of only memories but if they feel emotionally changed sometimes I mean, it's quite a spiritual destination that's, in many cases uh, yeah that's absolutely wonderful mm. there's just so many things to uh, experience there when we walked through that town of Kinsale and we went through a museum there and we went into a bread shop yes. where they made these very special breads yes. and it was just a whole you know, delicious experience. And I think food, I mean, is important to, to anybody whenever, wherever they travel in the if world. If you travel, you got to eat. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think the culinary experience in Ireland is second to none, but sometimes it, it surprises people. Again, we, we have some wonderful um, restaurants, we have run, wonderful chefs, we have a terrific food provenance, and, and the whole, um, f you know, farm to fork kind of approach has been alive and well in Ireland for the last 15, 20 years. Um, and it, but it still is the one aspect of any trip that when Americans come back, they say, the food was fantastic. It is so fresh. You're never far away from the sea, for example. Oh, yes. Um, so whether you're interested in doing a food trail, going to some artisanal markets, seeing uh, producers, whether the food pro um, cheese producers, dairy producers, you can go to an oyster farm. Um, catch your own fish and then you know cook it on the barbecue or have the chef cook it in the evening um, the food is spectacular and it's that simplicity I mean of, of preparation I think if you're good ingredients no matter what you do with it it's always going to taste good oh yes and we love our potatoes of course oh yes and beer <laughs> And be it. Uh, <laughs> yes, the Guinness Storehouse and uh, it's a must for anybody visiting Ireland. But there's a, a real um, uh, movement in terms of craft beers and you'll find a lot of craft beers. You'll also find a lot of new uh, whiskey distilleries opening up around Ireland as well. Um, so mm. anybody that's interested in, in food and drink, um, this is the, the year to go. Uh, in Northern Ireland, they have designated this year as a year of food and drink. And every single month there will be uh, a different theme. So as we move into July, it's all about locks and lakes. So it's about fish. And, and, and the ocean. Um, so you're never far from good food. We love to eat. Yeah, that's why I want to also ask, what's the difference really between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland? Well, from a, a, a tourism perspective, um, I mean, it's one island from a tourism. There's no, there's no border there. Northern Ireland is, is jurisdictionally part of the United Kingdom, so you, we do have the pound sterling. Republic of Ireland is the euro. But from a tourism experience, um, it offers its own unique sense of uh, history and heritage, beautiful scenery along the Causeway Coastal Route. So if you're driving up the west coast of Ireland and as you come uh, into Donegal and around to the city of Derry or Londonderry, the only completely walled city in Ireland, you will then carry on and uh, mm. you'll experience the, the Giant's Causeway, the Carrick Reed Rope Bridge and then into and, and all the way down to the Nine Glens of Antrim to the city of Belfast. Um, and Belfast, that many people don't realise, was where Titanic was built. And a city, really? a very vibrant city, a city that has had, you know, has had a, a checkered history over the years. but. The last 20 years is vibrant, is, is, is buzzing with, with activity, with music, great restaurants, and a very uh, strong and, um, and rich cultural heritage, as well as that strong maritime heritage. So a must-see for anybody there is to visit Titanic Belfast and uh, to see where Titanic was launched back in 1912, and you can also visit the tender ship uh, Nomadic. That, that is so fantastic. I mean, I had no idea that the Titanic yes, was built yeah. there. 
and uh, you know, unfortunately, what happened. But the point is, it just—I mean—that is such incredible history. Oh, so it the is. yard is still there. Oh, it is. I mean, the yard, Harland Wharf, is still there, and the Titanic um, experience, which is a wonderful experiential visitor attraction. It's not a, so a, it's a, a museum. museum. It's a museum, but museum is really the wrong word. It's very uh, interactive. It's very experiential. And as you look out of the museum, you're looking into the Clarendon Dock, which is where um, Titanic was built. And um, as, as we say in, in Northern Ireland, we say in Belfast, she was fine when she left here. That <laughs> <laughs> um, was when he got on the other absolutely. side of the sea. But again, within that visitor experience, lots of stories. It's as much about the, 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 sh the shipbuilding and how it was built, um, but it's the stories of the people that worked uh, on the ship and the stories, obviously, of, of people that traveled on the ship as well. And oh, there's very yes. strong, obviously, American connections there. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's a sad story on the it other is, end. Absolutely. But, but from the yes. beginning, it's uh, yes. a glorious story because it was the largest ship at that particular time. It was, time. it was, exactly, yes. And supposedly the safest at that time. At that time it was, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. And now they're building ships that are 5,000 people on, which is ridiculous. It is, <laughs> yes. And in fact, I mean, um, I mean we, we've seen an increasing number of cruise ships now coming into a variety of ports in Ireland. So again, for, for people wanting to, to experience Ireland on a, on a cruise itinerary, um, it's, I mean, we, we will see probably close to 100,000 passengers arrive uh, into Ireland this year. Belfast, Dublin, Cove, City of Derry, Londonderry, different ports around the country depending upon the itinerary and depending upon the ship. Now is this transatlantic or is this um, just... These tend to be, no, these tend to be itineraries that um, originate um, generally in the in UK, Europe. in Europe, um, usually part of a British Isles itinerary or part of a Northern European itinerary. Um, but again, it, it gives people a taste of, of what's on offer and the great thing about uh, uh, visiting Ireland on a cruise ship is that you, it's a small country and you can do it offers a variety of experiences so you can go off and golf for the day we've got some of the world's best links courses we've also got some of the best uh, uh, the world's top golfers you can go hiking you can do a culinary tour you can do a city tour um, lots of things to do nowhere is terribly far it's a compact destination and uh, for anybody and interested in history heritage stately homes and gardens you'll find them north south east and west around the island well Ireland is very, very special. We think it is. Yes, and I can't wait to go back and experience after 17 years or whatever number of years I've been there. You have to go, John. It's changed an awful lot. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing this with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Chasing wild ass. Oh, it's not what you're thinking. It's all about my travel around the world. I have interspersed photos and recipes to whet your appetite and allow you to dream and discover and rediscover these faraway destinations. The title came about while we were in Koch Wild Ass Sanctuary chasing jackasses in Gujarat, India. Chasing Wild Ass is food for the soul. It's adventure, it's history, it's culture, it's culinary, and it's a lifestyle. Chasing Wild Ass will entertain you and massage your soul. It's a celebration of life. You have to live every moment as if it's your last. My world is your world, so remember, get up, get out, and travel! Welcome back, I'm John Haggins. I'm here with Steve Johnson, and he's from the Thailand Tourist Office, and he's gonna talk about Thailand, because every time I go there, there's another rock to turn, and I just love it. It's a very special culture, it's a very special, the cuisine is special, everything about it is special. Talk about Thailand. Great to be here with you, John, and, and to be able to, to speak about uh, Thailand. Um, as you said, there's so much happening in Thailand. What I like to do is explore the new and interesting destinations off the beaten path that, that many people don't know about. Um, a lot of people think, you know, Thailand is just Bangkok and Chiang Mai and Phuket, but there's so much more. Oh, yeah. You know, in the south, further than Phuket, there's Trang, which is very laid back and very peaceful. And there's the first capital, which is Sukhothai, which is in the central part. A lot of people don't know about it and I've of course there. did you and did you have a good time I loved it. it's beautiful so it. great in history oh, yeah. and then there are the off the beaten path islands like the island of Kokut and the Gulf of Thailand which are very secluded very beautiful resorts there uh, so there's so much to do in Thailand and, and so many destinations that are off the beaten path that people tend to forget that Thailand is a beautiful country about the size of Texas uh, is it really? Yeah, about that size. So it there's a lot to, to see big. and do. Um, somehow, I don't know, Texas is just huge. I know, but, yeah. but it, it really 
is roughly the size of Texas or wow. France. Right. And so there's a lot to see and do and a lot of people come and just go to the typical destinations and don't venture off. And we often say to them, take that leap of faith and go and see and explore. And the people of Tallinn are so beautiful and so friendly. And the food and, and, oh. and, and oh. everything else that goes with it and the Absolutely. interesting finds in terms of shopping when you go to these interesting off the beaten path destinations. Absolutely. You come back with great, great, great interesting uh, gifts for friends and family. Absolutely. You know, we were in uh, Koh uh, Panyang, I, I Koh think. Koh Panyang, yes. Yeah, which which is, I thought was so different and yes. so wonderful. And you arrive by boat yes. to this very yes. special island. Yes. And also the Anta Anatara yes. uh, Hotel yeah. beautiful, and Resort beautiful. is just unbelievable. Yes, we call Koh Panyang the, uh, the Maldives of Thailand. Oh, it is. Um, and it's, it's a special island. It's just off the island of Koh Samui. It's in the Gulf of Thailand. Uh, very secluded. And of course, the Anantara, where you stayed, is right on the beach. Oh, Beautiful beach. Unbelievable. Um, it's actually the island where um, a lot of the young folk go for the full moon party. So it's, it's quite an interesting island, but the, the, the side of the island that you went to, which is where the Anantara is, is a lot more secluded and laid back. It's here on Koh Panyang. We have so much seafood available around our area. Softshell crabs, we have uh, local kingfish, we have abundance of all prawns from mantis shrimps to tiger prawns. One of my specialities at breakfast time is eggs benedict with blue crab. One of the most popular items we actually serve but it's beautiful oh, yeah. and, and that part of Thailand is also very good for snorkeling and for diving as well. And they have a little town next door which I think is really terrific. Yes, you and charming well. and quaint and exactly. the best ice cream that I've ever had in the world homemade. is in Koh yes. Oh, yes, so homemade. it's great. You know what I thought was also interesting was the fact that I had an elephant lift me, put his tusk around me and lifted me into the sky and I went, yes, <laughs> I love it. It's so fantastic. I know, these are gentle giants and, and they're so peaceful and, and it's it's an amazing thing to go and, and have an exchange with the elephants in Thailand. Oh. I often tell people it changes your life, yeah. you know, and uh, just to see these gentle giants and, and, and the way that they, they interact. Absolutely. And they remember you, especially children. So oh. it's a great thing for anyone who's going to Thailand. They must, must, must have an experience with the elephants. But they're not as large as elephants I've seen elsewhere. You know? Yeah, the Asian elephants tend to be a little bit smaller than the African ones. And right. you kind of tend to, to uh, note the differentiation by their ears. The right. Asian elephants have smaller ears right. than the African elephants. But they also have, for instance, in I think it was uh, Chiang Mai, the elephant park where they actually paint literally yes. take a brush and they do yeah. elephant paintings. They are good artists. They yeah. are good artists yeah. and, and a, a number of the, of, the, of the camps will allow you to interact with the elephants um, and paint with them as well, which is, which is something that's unique and then you can take back the piece of art that's done by the elephant. What I thought was interesting was uh, elephant polo. <laughs> yes, yes. I thought that yes. was really amazing. And what I thought was interesting about that was that the uh, the MC was saying, and they're coming, and they're running, and they and they tell the elephants going trot, 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 and he's so excited, and the elephant going very lazily going along. And I thought that was very funny. Yeah. But it was just so amazing. And you know, the interesting thing too is when you land in Bangkok, you must go to the Grand Palace. <laughs> This is Bangkok. It's a very exciting metropolis with lots of people. The Grand Palace is the most visited site in the city, and it's amazing, absolutely amazing. And it's colorful, it's historical. So many people come from around the world to see this. This is Bangkok. The Grand Palace is an unforgettable experience. There's so much history, colorful sights, and the most popular tourist site in Bangkok. It's so beautiful. The it colors, yeah. the culture, the history. It's, it's so regal. And so well maintained. It was Absolutely. built in 1782 mm. and uh, you know it's been, it's been the, the, the most featured attraction in all of Thailand. It's, it's the home of the Emerald Buddha and so anyone that's going to Thailand often will say I want to go to the Grand Palace. But you know 
there's so much beyond the Grand Palace that you can also do. You know, there are many other temples that are just as beautiful. Uh, so clients have very good options when they go to Bangkok. You know, right. a lot of people say, oh, it's a little bit crowded for me now. Um, and we often recommend that they go to different temples right. where it's a lot more surreal and a lot more peaceful. So there's a lot of options when you go to Bangkok. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't forget the reclining Buddha. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's about 46 meters long oh, and, and uh, what just an incredible gorgeous. Sight. Yeah. What an incredible sight. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I, you know, as I said, every time I go, I always discover something. Someone said, why do you go back? I said, yeah. because there's always something new. There's always something new to discover, know. you know. And also going to Chiang Rai, which is a whole other experience. Yes, very, very one of my favorite destinations in the north. Um, Chiang Rai is on the border of, of Burma, um, Burma right. um, uh, Myanmar, and, and also Laos. It's, it's the Golden Triangle area. Right. So it's very laid back, very subdued, uh, very relaxed. And you have some beautiful properties there. You also have the White Temple, oh, yes. which is very interesting as well. Oh, yeah. um, so there's a lot to see and do. And you can go from Chiang Rai also to Chiang Mai, and you can drive. That. It's a yeah. peaceful drive. Right. You know, It takes about three and a half to four hours. And it's a great way to, to see the countryside of Thailand and, and to stop and to you know, have something to eat and interact with the local people. Right, and going know? up and, and Chiang Mai, yes. up to that temple. Doi Su Tep, yes. Yeah. I mean, my God, all I those know. steps. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. And yeah. for those who don't want to do the steps, there's the, the tram that can take you up. Right. Uh, it's a very well-respected temple in all of Thailand. A lot of Thai people, they say that at least once in their lifetime, they must go to Doi Su Tep. I like to go early in the morning oh, yes. um, before all the crowds get there. And it's very peaceful and very tranquil. And the monks um, are chanting. The monks are chanting, and, and they can give you a special blessing. Oh. And you can just, you know, just say some prayers and, and, and be in that peaceful environment. It's beautiful and great for picture taking as oh. well. Oh, God. it's so yes. colorful. Yes. So colorful. Yes. I had an experience when I came out of the hotel on a bicycle and I didn't realize which side of the road I should be going. Oh. Finally, I saw something coming towards me. I said, oh, the other side. Yes. So, yes. And then yes. I went down, I wound up at one of the uh, fields, I don't know what, what they were growing there, but anyway, then I turned and I was going down the street and I couldn't figure out the turn and this dog started chasing me and I'm going <laughs> up the street, pedaling so fast. I got back, I jumped in the pool because I was so exhausted. From well, you had your exercise. Street. Yes, for the yeah. morning, early morning. I know, one but, of the things that I definitely always recommend that clients do when they go to um, to uh, Chiang Mai is to do almsgiving. And that's, that? almsgiving is basically when you go very early in the morning Morning. Uh, it's very uh, typical in, in, in Thai culture that the, the locals will provide food to the monks. Oh, and oh, you have the option to do that. A lot of the, the tour companies or even the hotels can arrange it for you. And you go very early. We like to leave at about 5.30 and we give alms to the monks. So we give them food and they will say a blessing for us. And it oh, nice. really is a great way to start the day and something so meaningful and spiritual. Uh, so I always recommend it whenever someone's in, what in a great Thailand. Idea. Uh, and particularly in Chiang Mai at the bottom of Doi Su Tep, you can go give alms. Right. Yeah. And also we had that experience when we were in uh, Koh Sa Pang Yang. Yes. And it was just so fantastic. They came to the hotel uh -huh. and they blessed us and they gave us these wonderful yes. bracelets and yes. so forth. And it was just, uh, and then they had their meal and yes. it was a nice sharing. Exactly. Experience. That's another form of alms giving because it's done all throughout Thailand. Yeah. Um, but I like to do it in Chiang Mai. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody has their own special, you know, or whatever. Yes. And we yes. also visited the Long Neck uh, tribe. Yes, when that's we were in, there. in the north. Yeah. Were you in the north? Right. Yes. Yeah. And I thought that was very unusual because they had it around their legs and around their necks. Yes, it's a very interesting. Um, um, uh, culture, culture, and and something interesting for people to to see and experience. Absolutely, uh, the hill tribes um, are very prominent in the north part of Thailand. Um, they make very good uh, art and craft, Absolutely. and just to go and see the way of life of Absolutely. the hill tribe people, and to buy um, some of those wonderful exactly things. beautiful. And then the tea plantations in the north are also very interesting. I had never been to a tea plantation prior to visiting Thailand, and they're in the very hills. Right, and I don't drink. Tea 
tea and, and I was you so don't. amazed. Shocking. Well, not, I mean, I do, but not <laughs> every day. And, and I left with about $100 worth of different types of teas because wow. the, the saleswoman was so good. But it was just <laughs> such a great experience to go and, and sample the different types of teas and what they're good for. And, and, and it was just a great experience. How wonderful is that? Yes, and there's Doitung, which is the botanical gardens um, and, and uh, the villa of, of the, the, the uh, king's mother. Uh, it's a great place to visit as there. well. Beautiful, there. beautiful. Yeah. So there's a lot that people don't realize uh, that is in Thailand that they can see besides the, the you know, the, the, the cities like, such as Bangkok and the beaches, etc. Right. But you have to be adventurous and go off the beaten path. Like Penang and so forth, yes. which is not off the beaten path, but it's yes. a typical kind of place that people go for beaches. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. of course, you know, in the south and the Andaman coast or in the, the Gulf of Thailand as well. It's, right. it's, it's, it's going beautiful. going down to Phi Phi Island and so forth. Exactly. Yeah. And through the cave. Exactly. Uh, the sea kayaking is very, very popular in the south. Right. And a great activity. You know, there are many, many companies, uh, for example, John Gray Sea Kayaking, where you can sea kayak in the evening. I've done an amazing tour where you go into the caves at night and you come out into this huge lagoon and there are thousands of fireflies all around. It's just magical and just peaceful. Oh. And that's what Thailand is all about. There's always something new at every turn. And you leave the country feeling like, wow, I've left with an experience. Also an education. Exactly. And great food. Yes. Oh. Oh yes. my God, I love yeah. it, I love yeah. it. And I, I, whenever there's, a, there's Thai food, every day actually I go swimming three times a week and after I go to a Thai restaurant on, on 10th Avenue and I have Thai food and it's just so wonderful because I think of that a whole experience of being in Thailand. Yeah. And it's just such a great... Uh, it's true. Yeah. But you know, Thai food doesn't taste like Thai food unless you have it in Thailand. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yes. You know, but it's a remembrance. Oh, yes. I think that's the whole of thing. Of course, of course. And it's course. just, uh, it's a, a very special place that uh, I think everyone should go and experience. And, uh, and when you go, go maybe the first time to uh, several of the different destinations, but then when you go back, go to several others exactly. because you keep branching out and really exploring the whole yeah. country. My wish is for everyone uh, to at least visit Thailand once in their lifetime. Because I believe it offers you uh, such a, an interesting experience and, and it can change your life if you truly go with an open mind. Absolutely. And to see how beautiful and hospitable the Thai people are. It's part of our DNA. Yeah. And so I believe that everyone should experience that at least once in their life and, mm -hmm. and to come back feeling that they've actually self-actualized and learned something uh, new and had different experiences because that's what we're all about in Thailand. Well, you're blessed. I am indeed. Thank you, Kap. Kap and Krap. Yes. And yeah. um, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. For thank sharing you. the Thai experience yes. with Globetrotter TV. And thank you for sharing Thailand with your, with your audience. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Thailand is very, very special. And Thailand is just a place that everybody should go. So remember, get up, get out, and travel. Welcome to Globetrotter. I'm John Haggins. I'm here in Parachi, and Parachi is a very exciting colonial city. Globetrotter Television is a half-hour weekly lifestyle travel show that features many destinations around the world. Globetrotter is an educational tool that allows you to dream of those faraway destinations. Globetrotter features cuisine, history, tradition, culture, and much more. I think the whole world has been influenced by Gandhi. And I love the food here, I love the people, I love the noise of the tuk-tuks going by. You must come to Gujarat because there's so much going on as I'm about to be killed. Globetrotter Television is a trip of a lifetime. Remember, my world is your world. So get up, get out, and travel.